Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Merry Christmas. All right. And uh, I don't really have a whole lot of announcements this morning. Um, hopefully you're joining us online as well. But we do want to welcome Ken and Krista Kalinowski uh, as new members. <laughs> Bible Fellowship, right? Am I right this time? Okay, all right. I just... All right, so... Um, <clears throat> And also, next week, um, Pastor Jeremy will be doing his, seems like his regular uh, New Year's Day message. So, um, and I say, I say regular because I always tasked him, task him with that, uh, uh, doing that service. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> this morning I want to read from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. This day that we come together is a day where we celebrate the gift that you've given to all mankind. You offered it to every person. And we're grateful for that gift. We praise you for it. We come together today and sing familiar hymns that have been sung for hundreds of years. And um, Lord, we're just reminded of all of the things that this, this brings together for us. This commemoration of the beginning of the redemption of man. And Lord, we know that that story started long, long before that, but but this is where we see your love for mankind poured out. And Lord, we're grateful for this. We celebrate it. We thank you for it. We pray that it's a blessing not only to us this, this uh, day, uh, but Lord, uh, to our families and our friends and the gatherings that we uh, take part in throughout this holiday season. May we be a blessing to those around us, and to share this wonderful message of hope with the world that we live in. And so, to that end, Lord, we look to your word and we ask that you would guide and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, <clears throat> I was thinking about this last phrase, and this really is all I want to deal with this morning, is a brief uh, message uh, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking about this phrase, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And I, I think I heard this week that uh, President Joe Biden in the U.S., he kind of based his message. He has a, you know, a little Christmas message, and he put it out there that, um, you know, that he hopes that this season brings uh, peace on earth uh, and goodwill toward men. And I, I thought about that. I thought, what, is, what does that really mean, goodwill toward men? I, I, so I did a little investigation, a little bit of study. I looked online. Uh, I found out that this really took hold. I mean, the King James Version, that's the way it's translated is goodwill toward men and and uh and this whole idea of peace on earth you know I, I was thinking about peace on earth and in light of last sunday i don't know how many kids we had up here how many how many were up here like does anybody know 40 40 kids probably something like that i mean it was packed that didn't look very peaceful it didn't look peaceful for the teachers it didn't look peaceful <laughs> i mean it was but it was quite entertaining. It always is when you put a bunch of children on the stage. 
And, uh, you know, but very little peace. So that's our representation of Christmas. The, the angels came and the hosts sang and they said, you know, there's going to be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. But what does it really mean? And it's a, it's a misunderstood phrase, I believe. There was a local newspaper article that I, I pulled up online. Uh, it wasn't from around here, but it was just one of those local papers and there was somebody writing there uh, about this idea. And, and he talked about in the article that um, according to Will and Ariel Durant, authors of Lessons of History, there have been over 268 years without... There have only been 268 years without war over the past 3,021. Now, I don't know how they calculated all that, but those are the number of years that have been without war in our world. And then he went on to say, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Is it really possible? And if so, what will it take to bring it about? And I think, you know, it's interesting how our world looks at it. It's like, well, we, this is what we're striving for. And that's what you hear all over the news and you know everywhere you read is that this is the goal somehow somehow we're going to bring about peace on earth and then you know he made this comment here's what it would take it would take respect for one thing respect for property respect for human freedom for the right of every human being to live their lives as they see fit no matter their color nationality or sexual orientation that is the solution, is that somehow we just need to, if we could just respect each other more. I don't think that's the solution. This is the promise that the angels left as they sang glory to God in the highest and peace on earth among those with whom he is pleased. So first of all, I think one of the problems is that we're missing the point. We're missing the point of this message. We're missing the point that, um, you know, there's, there's some way to create an opportunity that there'll be good will toward men. So, you know, I read an article and this was an interesting article. It's the power of global trade to communicate or to create opportunity and goodwill toward men. The power of global trade. And it went on and talked all about how, you know, our investment opportunities are really an opportunity to create goodwill. It was, uh, what was interesting about it was is that it was all, it had all kinds of scripture in it. So it was very interesting how this person was laying down a, um, uh, an apologetic for how they were going to fix the world through building up my portfolio. <laughs> he argued that um, by making his portfolio stronger, we'll fulfill this prophecy providing that we don't fall in love with money. That was the one caveat, is that we don't fall in love with money. I thought, I think that's already happened. <laughs> when you co-opt the story of Christmas so that you can, you know, do better at your trading, um, I think you're in trouble. But I think we're missing the point. Goodwill toward men. In fact, as I did some research on it, it uh, it's made up of three words. That that last um, that last phrase, "goodwill toward men," or as it says in the uh, ESV, as I read this morning, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So peace among those who whom he is pleased. It's really made up of three words, en, anthropos, eudokia. And I know you don't really care about the Greek, but it is very interesting that all those words came from those three Greek words. And en being the word in, or among, or uh, that kind of thing. So it's just, it's really um, a part of the speech, but it's, it's not 
it doesn't define what's going on there. Anthropos, you can probably guess if you have any history at all, means man, right? So goodwill among men, well, you've already got that word in there. So how do you get the rest of it? In fact, uh, that is interesting because it says, it says, among those with whom he is pleased, and that's where Eudokia comes in, that one word. And it means a lot of different things. It means will. It, it means purpose. It means pleasure. It means pleased. It means resolve. It means desire, and it means gracious. It gets it translated that way throughout the New Testament all the time. All those different words, interchangeably. So it is interesting. How do you make that, if you're a translator, how do you make that into a phrase that makes sense? I think that the best I could find was the RSV. And the RSV says this, peace in those whom he finds favor. And I think that's very significant because that's way different than what we're talking about, how we're going to have peace in our world and that's we're going to be good to other men, right? I mean, that's basically the idea, goodwill toward other men. If we can just be good to each other, then we'll find peace in the world. And what we forget about is, is that it's all about glory to God to begin with. So it's a different kind of peace, right? Peace for those whom he finds favor. It's not something that we can bring about. It's not something that we should expect to see happening out in the world. I think that's difficult for even us as Christians. Because, you know, we'd, we'd like the world to be a more peaceful place, right? We'd love for that to happen. And sometimes even Christians believe that what we're going to do is we're going to usher that in because if we're better Christians, if we share the gospel with more people, if more people become saved, we're going to fix the world. But once again, that's, I, it just doesn't fit with the plan that's laid out in Scripture. It doesn't work that way. So what is this different kind of peace? Uh, this Christmas, I hope we can all enjoy this different kind of peace. First of all, Scripture. I'm going to read a few verses to you. He is the Prince of Peace. He is our Prince, the one who sees us and cares about our circumstances. Right? If you, if you want to get someplace, you've got to get the ear of the Prince. You've got to be able to talk to the Prince. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, Isaiah 9, 6. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Not only that, Jesus is the solution to our alienation from God. And what I mean by that is we've been separated from God, right? Right? Colossians 1.20, And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Do you see how much different this peace is than the peace that, that we're all looking for? And sometimes, even as Christians, we get confused about how that peace comes about in our lives. Like, I know I do. I'm just saying, for me, it's like every time circumstances don't go my way, I was... Uh, I, I, decided, I decided on Monday that I was going to put a new floor in my living room, dining room, kitchen, and front entry. Is that a brilliant move or what? Right? I mean, that's just, all right, Christmas week, I'm a pastor. I mean, it's like you guys should just fire me because I have no good judgment whatsoever. You know, and, I, and, and the place was just a destroyed mess. And everybody came over last night for Christmas. But I was still cutting boards. And I put her together, didn't I? And then I made the whole family clean it up. Yeah. But anyway, so that's why you get invited to my house for Christmas. But you know, sometimes, I mean, we think if our circumstances could be better... You know, that's the kind of peace, that would bring me peace, right? If, if, if things didn't go wrong, if, 
and, and lots of things went wrong in this project, okay, because I have an old house, and nothing's square and flat and all that good stuff, you know. They show YouTube videos of these guys in brand new homes putting this stuff together, tap, tap, tap. No, I'm beating, pounding, and saying words that I, I should not say, or at least thinking them, you know. So that's what we think, that's where we think our peace comes from, but where does our peace come from? He's just trying to talk. He's trying to out-talk me. Where, where does our peace come from? It, it comes from Jesus, right? It comes from us being reconciled back to God and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on, heaven, in hev- on, hev- on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. That's the solution. And, and the thing is, is this peace comes because we're justified. Romans 5.1, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is where our peace comes from. It's like, now we're taken care of. We're, we're justified. We've been made just before God. And this is how we get peace in an unpredictable world. Isaiah 26, 3. If you keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You see, that's our trust in God is what brings us peace. We, we're not going to get peace in this world. I'm sorry to say it. I mean, some people might think, well, that's, that's just a sad message for Christmas. No, it's not. No, it's not, because Jesus is the greatest gift we could ever have. Fixing this world, this place is a mess. But the problem is the sin of man, which is what Jesus has come to take take away. So here's the thing. If you're a follower of Christ, and I'll say this, those online, those of you that are here, if you're a follower of Christ, learn to trust him more. And then no true peace. You know, it's it's on those who he finds favor. On on those that that peace comes to those who have found a purpose in him. It's on those who become his pleasure. It's a weird way to look at it but it's absolutely true you know what a privilege it is to become to become the pleasure of the creator of the universe that's what it means on who God's favor rests does his favor rest upon you is he pleased with you your peace is yours through Jesus and and I want to make this abundantly clear that that doesn't come because you're such a good person okay santa claus is checking who's naughty and nice god is looking through the eyes of jesus god accepts you because you have put your trust in his son for this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory Beyond all comparison. Delayed gratification. This life that we live, it's not perfect. It's challenging. We've got to get up every day. We've got to keep doing it. We've got to keep plowing through. And you know what? There are moments of joy. There are moments of peace. There are all those things for sure. And there are also moments of turmoil and difficulty and challenges and loss. And all those things are a part of this world but he is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison and if you've not given your life over to christ if you've never made that here is very simply how you can find peace you acknowledge your sin you acknowledge you're not a perfect person i i get to do it every sunday in front of you all but the fact is, is that you've got to be honest with yourself and you've, and you've got to let that go and you've got to accept that you're, 
not perfect, and you've got to be able to acknowledge that before the God that created you. And you confess it to Him, and you unburden yourself. That's what happens. You give it to Him. You don't carry that weight of burden anymore. If you want peace in your life, you got to get rid of that burden. You give it to Him. You accept that Jesus is the answer. He ultimately and only is the only real solution for your sin problem. He's the ultimate solution. He's the only solution. There is no plan B, and there doesn't have to be, because he's perfect, and he's just, and he does what he says he's going to do. So you accept that Jesus is the solution. He is the answer. You experience a restored relationship with the one who created you. This is how you find peace, is to have a real, meaningful relationship with God who created you. The only one that knows you, by the way. And then you become the object of his pleasure. And you find peace that passes all understanding. And you enjoy this Christmas like no other and receive the promised gift of true and everlasting peace. It's a simple, a very simple thing. It's so simple, it's amazing that people don't Do it. Because you're never going to find peace without it. You're not going to find peace in this world. You're not going to find solutions in this world. It doesn't have them. Jesus said this to his followers just before he was about to be crucified. He said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. That's where peace comes from. That's what Christmas is all about. And that's the joy of knowing Jesus, is that we don't struggle any longer with trying to find a reason, a purpose. You see, His favor rests on us. He is pleased because we are children of him. And so I hope, you know, I hope this Christmas is more than just the celebrations and the meals and all these different things. I hope this Christmas becomes an anniversary for the day that you made a choice to let Jesus Christ become your peace, your savior, the one the one who brings joy to the world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this season and the opportunity that it gives to us to talk freely about this wonderful, amazing gift that you've given us. And I pray, Lord, that as we go back to uh, different things that we're doing as families and and enjoying our time together, that um, you, you will be blessed in our conversations, in our time together, in our just being able to see all the great many blessings that you've given to us. I pray, Lord, that we would be your pleasure, that you would be glorified, and that we would live in peace. We thank you for that peace. Amen.